Assalamualaikum. Every year on November 1st, the region of Gilgit Baltistan officially celebrates independence from Kashmir's Dogra rule. Gilgit was liberated on November 1st, 1947, while Baltistan was freed in 1948 as a result of a bloody freedom war. In this video, we will try to briefly explain the history of Gilgit Baltistan. Why the people of Gilgit Baltistan celebrates its Independence Day on November 1st rather than on 14th? Let's get straight into it. Despite protestations from India and even some Kashmiris and despite Gilgit Baltistan existing in Pakistani map as a part of a territory whose status has yet to be determined the people of Gilgit Baltistan have never accepted being part of the disputed state of Jammu and Kashmir over which Pakistan and India have been at loggerheads since independence in 1947 it is instructive to look back at history to understand why for its independence present day gilgit baltistan was part of the state of jammu and kashmir one of the largest princely states of india the state was created in 1846 after the signing of a treaty between the british and gulab singh of the dogra dynasty during the first anglo sikh war in 1845 1846 gulab singh who was serving as a ruler of jammu in the sikh empire chose to side with the british East India Company by remaining neutral acknowledging Singh's loyalty during the war in 1846 the East India Company sold Kashmir to him for only 7.5 million rupees of that time with this accord Gulab Singh eventually became the first maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir had four units the province of Jammu the province of Kashmir the district of Gilgit and the district of Ladakh present day Baltistan was subjugated and annexed by Gulab Singh's Dogra army earlier in 1840 before the treaty of Amritsar in the new administrative setup Baltistan was made part of district Ladakh as Kardu Tehsil realizing the geostrategic importance of this region and fearing a possible russian invasion from central asia the british directly intervened and created the agency in order to bring the area under their control this marked the beginning of a dual british dogra control in gilgit sole administration remained with dogra rulers while military and security matters were placed directly under the control of british indian government the main aim of the british indian empire was to protect its northern border a local paramilitary force trained equipped and led by the british was formed and given the name of gilgit scouts in 1935 british took over the administration of gilgit agency from the dogra ruler under a 60 year lease however pakistan region remained under the direct rule of dogras two weeks before the independence of india and pakistan british abruptly cancelled the lease on july 30 1947 the british commander in chief of the kashmir army major general scott arrived in gilgit he was accompanied by brigadier gansara singh who had been sent to gilgit by the maharaja of kashmir as a governor the british offered the state of jammu and kashmir to take over gilgit as per the lease deed on august 1st brigadier gansara singh took charge of the gilgit agency from the british political agent colonel roger bacon The Union Jack was removed and the region fell under the control of Maharaja. The abrupt cancellation of the lease by Lord Mountbatten and the transfer of power to the Dogras left the Gilgit scouts concerned about their status. With the arrival of Kansara Singh, rumors started circulating that the Gilgit scouts were to be replaced by the Kashmiri army. The scouts were clearly against the takeover by Kashmiri troops. Serving in the Gilgit scouts was considered a privilege among the local people. Usman Ali narrates in his book Gilgit Khan Club the revolution of Gilgit that in this uncertain situation so with our major Babar Khan representing the scouts presented a set of demands to Gansara Singh the application addressed to the maharaja of Kashmir included demands to elevate the status of the Gilgit scouts bringing it at par with the Kashmiri state army providing the scouts similar training as that given to the state troops bringing the salaries and facilities to the scouts to match those of the state's army and increasing the number of scouts subedar major babar pledged loyalty of the scouts to the maharaja if these demands were met by that time maharaja had not decided on kashmir's accession to either pakistan or india however 
so by the major babur's surety meant that the scouts would remain loyal to maharaja in either case before and during dogra rule the regions of gilgit and baltistan were divided between small kingdoms which were ruled by rajas and mirs that means local rulers though there was dual administrative control of the british and the dogra dynasty over gilgit agency the rajas and mirs enjoyed considerable autonomy in their own territories in the scouts officers ranks were awarded to the ruling elites of these kingdoms which made the scouts a strong voice and an actor in the future settlement of this region however in the wake of the british departure from subcontinent and independence of pakistan and india the gilgit scouts showed opposition to the new ruler of agency as they were uncertain about their status with the end of british rule in sight uprisings began against the maharaja in different parts of kashmir Amid fear of Muslim uprisings in Kashmir and the rebels at once, the Maharaja on October 27, 1947, declared the accession of Kashmir to India. After accession, Gilgit was caught in an uncertain situation about its future. The Gilgit scouts, who had already formed a revolutionary council, initiated a revolt against Dogra rule on 31st October 1947. Kashmiri troops were stationed in Bunji. an area near gilgit which was the garrison of maharaja's army the muslim soldiers of the army led by mirza hasan khan attacked the sikh companies at bonji who then fled from the mountains towards rondu in baltistan governor gansara singh surrendered to subedar major babar after some resistance as a result of this revolt the areas surrounding gilgit were liberated from dogra rule an independent state the islamic republic of gilgit was declared on november 1st 1947 and a provincial government was formed in gilgit the revolutionary government designated raja shah rais khan of gilgit as president and colonel mirza hasan khan as a chief of armed forces after 15 days of independence gilgit acceded to pakistan unconditionally On November 16th 1947 the representative of government of Pakistan Sardar Muhammad Alam Khan arrived in Gilgit and took charge as the political agent while the raja of Rondu Muhammad Ali Khan organized the populace with meager resources to fight against the Sikh troops who had reached there numerous troops were killed in the battle and many were arrested and sent to Gilgit the raja of Rondu later wrote a letter and invited the Gilgit scouts to liberate Baltistan from Dogra Raj as there was no organized local force in the area in baltistan the local people fought alongside the scouts for nearly a year against the kashmir army and paid a heavy toll in casualties independence was achieved through brutal and running battles by a handful of mostly civilian fighters led by the gilgit scouts against the forces of kashmir after the unconditional accession of the region to pakistan instead of devising a proper governance and administrative structure the government of pakistan imposed the frontier crimes regulation fcr in the area fcr a colonial law deprived people of their basic rights and gave the political agent a civil servant supreme authority with executive legislative and judicial power furthermore despite pakistan's annexation of gilgit and later baltistan despotic Rajgiri that means the principality in jagirdari the feudal system was not abolished the exploitative practices of taxation and begar forced labor without pay by the rajas and mirs continued the question of how to deal with gb remained a problem for the state in the initial years gb was deprived of administrative powers and governed by the bureaucracy and federal ministry noshin ali in her book delusional states maintains that although the political leadership of Pakistan had accepted the accession Pakistan fell shortly of formally incorporating GB into its territory primarily because of the contest with India over the control of Jammu and Kashmir consequently the government of Pakistan linked GB with Kashmir in anticipation of gaining more votes in a possible united nations plebiscite for the resolution of the kashmir dispute due to this linkage the region still has the status of a disputed territory subsequently the region is in constitutional limbo and denied representation in the national legislature successive governments have tried to regulate the problems and solve the puzzle through different measures however the anomaly still exists the question of gb's integration into pakistan is complicated as pakistan and india both maintain gb is part of kashmir when india raised the case of kashmir before the un india's claim on kashmir was denied 
in the whole state of Kashmir including Gilgit Baltistan became a disputed territory. The issue was supposed to be resolved through a plebiscite with certain preconditions. DB's scholars and political analysts take a contrary position. As per historical accounts, Kashmir's Dogra captured Baltistan through military aggression. There was no legal or constitutional rationale for their rule. The people never accepted their rule either. Hence, the occupation of the region through military invasion cannot justify associating the region with Kashmir. Now, what makes GB's conundrum intricate is that, despite 75 years of its independence, it is still unable to achieve what it strove for. Every year, people of Gilgit Baltistan celebrate their independence with great zeal. However, the struggle to integrate the region in Pakistan continues. Various governments in Pakistan have tried in the past to regulate the issues of Gilgit Baltistan through reforms and executive orders. Recently, the region has come under the spotlight again when the federal government announced plans to give Gilgit Baltistan provincial status. It seemed GB was finally on the path of integration with Pakistan. However, the important question remains whether the government of Pakistan can take this bold step and instead of another executive order, bring GB into the ambit of Pakistan's constitution. In fact, that struggle of Gilgit Baltistan for its rights and integration is decades slow. If you want this video in Urdu as well, let me know in the comment section. Allah Hafiz.